Baku is not an easy weekend for Scuderia Ferrari. We are at round 17 of the 2024 Formula One season, and the red team must make compromises in order to get the most out of the SF24. The Marinello team continues to struggle with the usual issue, a lack of performance in low-speed driving phases. This endemic problem has been following Ferrari since the beginning of the championship and is mainly due to suspension designs that fail to provide the right level of grip when cornering speeds decrease. However, the Italian car has shown good performance in the 90-degree corners of the first sector. The adjustments to the ride height made by the mechanics before the second free practice session delivered the expected improvements. But shifting the center of pressure has lightened the rear end a bit too much, which is now struggling with traction. It is therefore necessary to assess the rear load with possible adjustments to the flap to achieve more downforce. The flow viz observed on Ferrari's rear wing shows that the team wanted to collect important data to optimize the car's setup and, consequently, study the airflow structure as it moves through the car and reaches the rear. In terms of feeling, we can say that Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz had good sensations after the setup tweaks. The SF24 showed good performance in the one-lap runs, although it should be noted that the 066-12 power unit's revolutions were higher than Red Bull's. Also notable were the race pace references. The SF24 has learned to manage the tires, contain degradation, and therefore maintain a good rhythm with a higher fuel load. It remains to be understood, after studying the simulator using driver-in-the-loop software, what fine-tuning will be necessary to further improve the red car's performance. The aforementioned issue, caused by the suboptimal front-end grip on corner entry, which obviously also affects cornering and traction, though it has been treated with the setup, doesn't seem to be capable of improving further. The operating window is short in this regard, and until there are structural changes to the suspension, it will always be difficult to manage the transition between high and low speed. This is the general overview of Ferrari, which today look to further refine the SF24 in FP3. Now let's take a detailed look at how events unfolded for Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz in the final free practice session for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Everything is ready to hit the track. The usual vehicle checks have already taken place. Power unit, transmission, hybrid system, and braking system. Let's take a look at the weather conditions a few minutes before the start of the third free practice session of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. 27.4 degrees Celsius air temperature, 32.3 degrees Celsius track temperature, humidity at 36%, wind intensity at 0.8 kilometers per hour blowing from the east. A final glance at the telemetry and the engines of the SF24 cars roar to life. The mechanics give the signal and the Ferrari drivers can leave the garage. For this first part of FP3, both Italian cars go out on track with a set of red-banded Pirelli tires. At this moment, it seems that a few drops of rain are starting to fall on the Azerbaijani track. The warm-up cycle is being managed to the max in an attempt to get the tires to the right temperature. However, they barely finish the outlap before Esteban Ocon's Alpine stops on the main straight due to a power issue with the Renault engine derived from the transmission. As a result, the two red cars are forced to return to the pits. The Ferrari drivers remain in their cars, waiting for the A524 of the French driver to be removed so they can leave the pit lane again. The green flag is waved, and the two Ferrari single-seaters return to the track with the same set of tires they used earlier, now on used softs. The brakes are used a lot to warm up the rear axle, while the front is handled with steering inputs. After completing the warm-up, they switch to push mode and start driving with some caution. The track is quite cold, and a few drops are still falling on the Baku city circuit. The first impression of the red car's handling is good. Decent laps from both Ferrari drivers. Carlos Sainz is better than Charles Leclerc, who seems significantly less aggressive. The oversteering behavior on corner exit remains. Therefore, several changes to the differential maps at mid-corner are suggested, a necessary move to manage the car's rotation. After a cool-down lap to cool the tires, they switch to engine one mode, maximum power from the internal combustion engine, and then they are ready to give it their all again. Carlos Sainz lifts off in turn two due to Max Verstappen's traffic. The Spaniard doesn't make an issue out of it and stays focused, although the Dutchman effectively ruined his second attempt. Up until the final sector, Charles Leclerc's lap was very good. Unfortunately, the red team's junior driver, Oliver Behrman, comes to a stop in turn one with his Haas. Once again, the Ferrari drivers are forced to stop their session and head back to the garage. A few minutes later, they are back on track. Ferrari is still on the same used red-banded tires, 
resuming work from where they left off. Engine 1 to push to the max with the internal combustion engine, warm-up completed, and off they go again to test the red car in qualifying trim. Carlos Sainz runs a bit long in turn 2 and has to correct his car, an error that costs him dearly. Charles Leclerc also isn't perfect and, like his teammate, has to make some steering adjustments in the second sector. However, the Monegasque driver manages to keep good lines, and at the end of the lap, his time is excellent, first position. Thus, they move on to the next part of the work program. The Reds return to the garage. Inside, you can hear the voices of the Ferrari engineers, Brian Bozzi and Ricardo Adami, giving further suggestions on how to manage the SF24's drivability. A short break, and then back on track, still on softs, this time with a brand new set. A slight tweak to the front wing to balance the load further, and then off they go to fine-tune tire deformation in the warm-up cycle. Carlos Sainz is unlucky as he gets a yellow flag in front of him due to a competitor running long into the escape road, forcing him to lift off. His Marinello teammate, on the other hand, completes the lap and further lowers his time. Only Sergio Perez does better than him by 66 thousandths, while just behind the Monegasque is the other Red Bull of Max Verstappen, a little over a tenth behind. Carlos Saiz is still quite unlucky, because in the final sector, turn 15, he encounters a Red Bull that forces him to lock up. Unfortunately, the new set of tires for the Spaniard wasn't fully exploited when they could have offered the most grip. Meanwhile, Charles Leclerc cools the tires for two laps and tries again one last time to lower his lap time further. When he completes it, the Ferrari driver calls it a shit lap. Indeed, the driving performance is certainly not great. A few too many small errors prevent the Ferrari driver from improving. Carlos Sainz, on the other hand, is getting some practice, and although he doesn't improve either, he does refine the handling. A positive note concerns the relative ease of bringing the front end up to temperature, which is very important for the qualifying session. The session will start in a few hours, and it seems Ferrari can have its say, trying to fight for pole position, especially with Charles Leclerc. The Monegasque driver had showed good progress throughout the session and managed to sit on top of the order after beating an impressive lap from Oscar Piastri later in the session, but the Ferrari driver's lap was beaten by George Russell's late 1 M42, 514 S effort. Russell, whose running on Friday had been interrupted by a series of power unit grumbles, reported that his Mercedes powertrain sounded strange through the corners and also struggled with the handling balance throughout much of the Saturday practice session. McLaren with Lando Norris managed to get closer but still remains about 0.2 seconds off George Russell's reference time. In the fast lap, there aren't many areas where the MCL 38 stands out, except in the downhill section between turns 15 and 16, where Norris is able to be more effective. 